right. Well, I'm going to begin. I really enjoyed the movie. <laughs> it oh, was, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it had much more kind of heart and relevance than I sort of was anticipating going in. It was a film that offered me about as much of a social sort of study of modern society more so than I've seen for some time. And it was all about sausages. So um, yeah, great work. <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm going to begin by asking what it was about about this story and about this character that initially attracted you to to getting involved. Well, it was so mad. Uh, I, I was really kind of dumbfounded by the script when I when I first read it, and Ulrich Thompson had compiled it from all kinds of uh, in, uh, news stories, documentaries, uh, interviews. But it was all verbatim. All the language in it was verbatim um, from Americans that he'd been kind of researching over like the past, I don't know, five years or something, or 10 years. And he'd, he'd kind of compiled this word for word into a screenplay, which is really ambitious because he's got all this great stuff, but how do you make that into a story that has a beginning, a middle and an end and, you know, and, and it can carry people. And um, that, that took a bit of uh, a leap, of, a leap of faith, and 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 a bit of engineering to you know on site to kind of like you know wrangle these scenes a, a little bit into something that's maybe more cleanly dramatic. Um, and so I'd had a lot of conversations with them because my very good friend Anthony Dodd Mantle, who's a cinematographer on this, and I'd worked with quite a number of times, uh, he had suggested bringing me on board with it to Ulrich and he and Ulrich go back many films in, in a long way and it was their sense of belief in it in this madcap thing that convinced me more than the script or more than anything else that was uh, associated with the film it was their genuine passion and belief that this dream could be fulfilled now I, I wasn't really sure going into it if if it could or not but I've worked for long enough on so many different projects that to know that that is, that is worth more than gold. If the people that uh, are making it have that sincere dream, um, that, that's a better indicator if the film will have value than how, what size the budget is or, or who's attached or who wrote it or who, you know, all of these things all of those factors can be A1, you know, they can be all, all you know, Oscar Gold, uh, writer, director, stars, script, you know, but if those, those projects can often turn to dust, you know, even, you know, you have the perfect, the perfect project and you see it in the cinema afterwards and it's, it's just this wooden, stiff kind of thing that doesn't achieve your expectations, but but yeah, I I knew that this would be different, and it, it, I think it is. Uh, it does have its definitely does have its own flavor, and and um, it's unconventional in the storytelling. Um, but it's got heart, and it's got it's got it's got heart and soul, and so sort it of reminds me of something like Napoleon Dynamite or something, and it's kind of uh, uniqueness. You know, it doesn't it doesn't um, fit into a clear a clear uh, mould. Mm. Were, yeah. um, were you quite surprised to learn that Ulrich was a vegan, <laughs> considering the the, 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 no, the, no, the nature of the story? And, and with that in mind, I'm assuming you weren't using real sausage meat. What, what, was, what was the replacement for that? Yeah, I was completely surprised. I haven't eaten meat since I was 11. So, uh, yeah, and I, I found it hard to believe that Ulrich was a vegan as well, but he insisted that... Uh, everything be made with vegetarian sausage meat. Um, so there was different, you know, I think they were using different things for different kinds of sausage, but uh, it was all, it was all vegan. Um, <laughs> but as a, as a, a <laughs> Which might put a lot of people off the movie now. I don't <laughs> yeah. know if that, if that gets out, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to see that <laughs> vegan nonsense, rabbit food. 
Um, well, oh, yeah, as far as I was reading, apparently there are some chocolates that are vegan, but they don't advertise they're vegan on the packaging because they think it's going to put people off buying it, even though but there we go. So, but, but, um, yeah. but, but my, my wife's vegetarian. So what, what, what's the best veggie sausage out there? What's, what would you say? is Because she, she's always she's on the hunt for like the perfect veggie sausage. There's Linda McCartney, there's Cauldron, it's all sorts of types. Have you got a favourite veggie yeah. sausage? I'd say I'd say the game has really stepped up a lot in the last few years, and and the the ones that I think are are good just now are the Beyond Beyond sausages. They they make some good stuff that that like beetroot and uh, what else, what else do they use in it? Like pea protein, like green peas and stuff. But they, the protein from it, and they they make some clever stuff. But it. But it, it is satisfying and flavorful and tastes like, you know, it's, it's very reminiscent of the, the real thing. So, yeah, good. There's a whole bunch of companies that, are, that have sort of jumped on it now. Yeah, yeah, I'll pass that on. But I mean, obviously, your character has a real fascination for sausages. Do you have any hobby or interests outside of work that you kind of do in your spare time? You know, be it making things, creative things, you know, from anything to sewing or collecting train sets or anything like that? <laughs> no, I, think, I, think, I think actors kind of need to have something to put their energy into uh, outside of work because the energy required when you're on a production concentration and uh just physical energy mental energy emotionally otherwise is it at a really high level you know you having to do scenes over and over and over again it might be an emotional scene or it might be physically exertive or it might be um you know comically very specific or and, and you need to be tuning your energy and it has to be there for uh the scene and then you might not work for like a number of months you know you might have nothing to do nobody wants you to do anything so that that up and downness can really play havoc with your mental health if you don't have something that you can put your energy into outside of that schedule you know those those this itinerant gypsy uh schedule that actors are on so i you know i i've always been a big music head and i i um yeah so i've always been sort of putting my energy into music stuff but um it's not how i make my living so i don't there's no pressure on it um but uh, i would never i i kind of hate the idea of hobbies so i never never see it as like a hobby but i know at the same time i don't like ever put it front and center it's always something that occupies my brain and trying to try like trying to figure out puzzles in a way you know trying to get to the bottom of something but yeah yeah i think you do need you do need um something to occupy uh your mind and your powers yeah but as a big music head what, what are you listening to at the moment have you got anything that you've uh, recently sort of not even just discovered but even just returned to is anything that's on, a, on your playlist at the moment uh I'm I'm listening to uh, what am I listening to the the like gospel from the 1950s and 60s. Nice. I'm listening to Moroccan music from like the 80s. I'm listening to um, what else am I listening to? I've got I've got a young baby, so a lot of listening is kind of related to that and uh, um. Yeah, I'm re re earthing, uh, re re listening to like uh, the young disciples from the '90s that I was I was so in love with when, in, in the 1990s, and uh, you know, Sly Stone. I was listening to in the, like the '80s, and you know, I'm just kind of going on sort of uh, memory. I've been listening to Black Midi, which is probably the most uh, recent stuff that I've been listening to. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I just sort of smash through a lot of different genres. Not, not really into, not really into rock music so much, but some of it maybe. And I was gonna, I'm gonna ask. I mean, obviously, it sounds like a bit of a, a big question, but it's always something that sort of 
been on the back of my mind. And I think this this obviously film, The American Sausage Standoff, um, is something, I mean, it is examining kind of identity fear. And a lot, there's lots to kind of take from this. It's very relevant, you know. And I just, I what, what do you think ignites this fear of the unknown? Without wanting to sound like holier than now, I, maybe, maybe growing up in kind of like multicultural London, I've always welcomed different cultures. It's fascinating. It's exciting. You learn so much from other people. You taste so much of their brilliant food that you get to eat from people from different places. As someone who doesn't have that, fear of or, or I'm not I'm not skeptical of others I've never been able to understand it what, what do you think it is that is instilled in modern society around the world that drives this kind of hatred and, and skepticism of people who aren't from the immediate vicinity yeah yeah uh, um I mean I think I think wherever you go xenophobia is an element of the human psyche and it's it's a it's a it's very much about well, you know, it will be a fear of the outsider, and fear uh, can get out of proportion like a wildfire. You know, it just suddenly gets out of proportion. One, some, some spark can set it off. And I think um, if you have that capacity and you don't have the perspective to know that, uh, you know, um, I don't know, without, without perspective, that fear can, can really just get out of control and once it is out of control it's very hard to kind of climb back from that um and i think um like yourself you know i grew up in 70s and 80s in in scotland and the the, the waves of uh, immigration they are completely transformed uh the cuisine of scotland which which had no cuisine I mean, no, not, no cuisine that anyone would eat outside of scotland uh, or would want to eat and and scottish cuisine now is so um great you know and, and nutritious and eclectic and and you know, thanks to uh immigration from the italians uh, pakistani india spain eastern europe you know, all these successive waves of immigration have completely transformed. I mean, food's the easy thing to, to look at, but the, the culture, I think, <clears throat> I think wherever you go, you know, my perspective is that wherever, wherever you look in the world, these, these waves of immigration, people that are traveling from their homeland to somewhere uh, other, they, they have so much more incentive to make it work. It's so much safer and and easier to, to stay at home but to make that journey and to transplant you and your family into an into an unknown land uh that is an engine of so much stuff an economic engine you know wherever you see it it's it's uh it drives the culture and it um in ways that evolve the culture and and i think is with xenophobia that idea of culture being something that is fixed, uh, and we, we we must we must maintain this thing. But culture is something that is evolving. And as an actor, that I see that I see actors as like kind of foot soldiers in that that the advance of culture. You know, like foot soldiers in putting you know carrying forth those ideas or exploring those ideas or you know, dramatizing those ideas that expand the culture and, and push that line forward, you know, um, towards, uh, I, you know, enlightenment in some way, you know, more enlightened. We've, we've been through ages of enlightenment in our culture that have opened us up and that has been through, you know, uh, uh, literature from different parts of the world and, and, um, and different, you know, waves of, Immigration and emigration, you know, well, all of our, all of our forefathers, our, our ancestors emigrated somewhere, you know, they've, they've all been, you know, um, finding their way to a place where they can, they can make it work, you know, and the film, the film explores that, um, that American Sausage Story puts it in a frame where uh, the, you can, it allows the audience to have a bit more perspective and fun with that and, and, and get the fear in perspective, I think, you know, because, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the dangerous thing, you know, it's, you, need, you need, I think it's a lack of, I think that fear is a, 
is associated to me with a lack of courage and uh, lack of perspective. My second to last question uh, was obviously Ulrich, we know mainly as an actor. I've seen him in brilliant things like Festen, the, uh, the Danish yes. movie. And I know you recently worked with um, Nick Moran as well, who, of course, again, is, is a director, um, an actor mm-hmm. making his move in, into direction. Um, have you ever given much consideration to stepping behind the lens, be it as a writing or direct, um, directing perspective? Or are you quite happy in the, in the, in the role that, you, that you're in already? Uh, I, I am happy in the role that I'm in already. <laughs> However, like... I accidentally became a director on a project uh, that uh, was initiated by Clark Middleton, who's in American Social Story, who, who plays the minister in that, the angry minister. And uh, he tragically passed away last year. He was my, my best friend and, and we, um, he, he wrote me into a film that he was producing and devising, creating with actors all over the world, like you know, 30 different countries and, and um, we were working remotely through the pandemic and he wrote me into directing a bunch of it alongside him and and then he uh, contracted west nile disease and and uh, he, he passed away about a year ago and um so in the meantime i've sort of inherited his duties on the film so that that film is now in edit in london um it's been edited by emma gaffney who edited the Nick Moran film um, and uh, creation stories, so that that that's a sort of accidental, uh, accidental direction gig that I've, I've been involved in. And um, uh, but outside of that, yeah, I mean, there's a few projects that develop um, are in development with um, good people that I, you know, work with from time to time, but. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, I'm I'm getting on long in the tooth now, you know, and, and as the years go by, you find like uh, you have aptitude for putting certain kinds of things together and you see how, you know, you see behind the scenes and you can see like how it works. But yeah, it's interesting working with these actors. They have, they do have a different way of thinking uh, through thinking through scenes than, than uh, people that are just solely directors. Um, actors tend to kind of like imagine themselves in the part and then kind of work their way through. For, for every character, they kind of work their way through and then the answer comes to them for what they, you know, what they need or whatever kind of information they need to share, yeah. My, my final question really was, obviously, you know, you've been in such a variety of huge blockbusters and sort of smaller indie films that with great characters like this one in American Sausage Standoff. But obviously one of the roles you're most kind of, um, uh, one of your most iconic and roles that you're most famous for is Spud, of course, in the Train Spotting series. I'm just wondering about, um, in regards to like when you, because I was thinking about you, the collective that made that kind of Irvine and, and, and Danny and then obviously all, all, the, all the boys in, in, in the kind of collective. And it was like the Beatles, you always think, they went through something that nobody else would quite understand other than those people i'm not suggesting you're like the beatles but that same sentiment you guys went through this as a kind of as a, a collective the success and the cult status that followed that um that, that movie does it always connect you when you see those guys again you hang out and on this on, on the sequel and stuff do you feel like you all share this this thing that was your that you but bind you and will bind you forever yeah that's a really good question uh, and and i hadn't thought about it like that until just now and I think yes uh, actually we recognize we were part of something that no one else will understand in the way that we understood it and the way that we experienced it and we recognize that in each other and I think it does bind us together um, we you know not not just uh, the good fortune but the, how the vision how, how the vision uh, of each of our parts, you know, like uh, the alchemy of that, how that, uh, that fusion of, of what we all brought to the table. Um, yeah, and, it's, you know, especially Danny and Irvin. But, you know, we, we do, we're, we're kind of linked in a way that um, probably not, experience on other productions um although I've you know 
had in my Stoneden experiences and made Stone friendships and other productions, uh, the, the group of us are linked in a way that I've not experienced in other productions. Yeah, so we, we, we do communicate and we, you know, share stuff through the years and, and uh, yeah. 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 So there's no, is there a train spotting WhatsApp group still? <laughs> uh <laughs> we're not we're not using the whatsapp but yeah we do we do like uh log in to to um you know type things about certain stuff as 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 time goes by and we're you know, we're all there you know like we're all, we're all there for each other although we're scattered you know like actors get sat, scattered so far and wide that it's hard to kind of maintain a, a an actual you know Oh, come around to your place, kind of thing. Because my place is usually a hotel room in Vancouver or in, you know, Timbuktu or somewhere. You know, it's it's uh, in, yeah, we're it's a gypsy life. You know. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time, Taylor. And it's been a real pleasure speaking to you. And, yeah, and best of luck with the release of the movie and stuff, you. And yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up again one day for sure. Thank you. Yes. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!